Welcome to the Vine Resources Podcast Show. Welcome to another edition of the Vine Resources Podcast Show. Absolutely delighted today with ha- to have with us Hannes Rothwell. Hannes Rothwell is the one of the founders of What's To Do in Germany. Hannes, thanks for joining us on the line. Yeah, thank you for your invitation. Uh, Hannes, why don't you just uh, give our listeners a brief introduction about your company? Yeah, I would love to do that. So basically we found what to do in October 2016 and uh, we are a marketplace that aims to give people the possibility to offer their services to other people and who are live like quite around the corner and until now it's like quite difficult to find someone to watch for your dog or to clean your house or to help you to install some appliances but these people they're just around you they're your neighbors and you there's like in Germany there's like no way to actually get to them and to ask them if they would want to help you and then to give them like a, a good share like some money for it and that's basically the the major idea of what's to do and that's what we are working on since last year and now we uh, we started out uh, in Berlin. We have like a community in Berlin now, in Hamburg and in Munich. And the people, they're responding uh, quite nice to it. They like it. They love it. We get uh, good responses and uh, the tasks get done. Fantastic. And so it's that creating that online community, uh, perhaps that's perhaps lacking in, in today's society as well, in, in, in the real world sometimes. Of course. And look, to, um, and you're based in out of Berlin at the moment, aren't you? Is that right? Yeah, we are based like in Friedrichshain, yeah, which is like uh, one of the hotspots for startups also, and uh, this is where our office is. But we are like the the workers and helpers. They are spread throughout the whole Berlin. Well, look, you you're a really exciting part of your uh, business journey. So perhaps uh, I'd love to share with our listeners what a typical day looks like for you. Uh, as you're going through the build of your company? Okay, so I, I would start to wake up around nine and uh, then prepare myself to go to the office because we start our office day at 10. Then I have uh, my first meeting with my co-founder where we go over the topics that are important for uh, for the day. And uh, after that, I check my mails really quick for like 15 to 20 minutes and do that. And then we have our day like he's structured mostly in like five, the five most important topics. And for today, that was like, uh, usually we start off with a daily business. So uh, working with requests to get from the users. Then we do a uh, strategy and development. So we talk about where we want to go, like uh, where we have to change things. And also um, what, what needs to be done in the development part. After that, we uh, go into uh, some conception where we try to uh, talk about ideas that we had in the past and how, could, how can we improve them for the future, kind of. And then uh, we go into the ICO topic because right now we are planning an ICO for what's to do to make it easier for people to pay each other. Because right now it's like really difficult by regulations in Germany that uh, if one person wants to pay you uh, with a credit card and the other person has only PayPal, it's like a real mess. So th- that's like one of the topics. And then uh, at five, our developers are coming in and then we are working with them until 10 in the evening and sometimes until midnight. And that's like a typical day. Uh, yeah, and in the development part, uh, it's usually like working on the sprints and working on solutions. Fantastic. You had me worried there starting at 10 o'clock in the morning then because I thought I thought <laughs> I thought I must be doing something wrong. <laughs> Yeah, no, it's like really because like usually I'm not out of the office before midnight and then uh, I get home, like usually I go to McFit before for an hour to do, them, to do some sports and then I need it like at least eight or nine hours of sleep because otherwise uh, I'm a mess in the office. I, 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 well, that's good and it's good. I'm good that you're thinking about your sleep because that's really important. Look, Hannes, can you, can you name, uh, thanks for sharing that with us. Hannes, can you name a person that's had you know, quite a big impact on you, uh, at, at, perhaps as you've, as you've started this organization, perhaps it's even a, a previous mentor to you. I think the person that had the most impact on me is probably Elon Musk. Um, I started to like read some articles about him and then I got like really involved in him. And uh, in our company, we started to, to get the habit to listen to audiobooks about like important or like interesting people. And 
I think like, uh, yeah, the, the most influential person for myself was Elon Musk. We also met him already. And because, because like t through like, um, like uh, of uh, Ilya, the co-founder, he has like someone who knows him. And then, so we saw him at least, which, which was really great. But um, I, I didn't get to speak to him personally, but like in his books, he's like also outlining what is important to him, what he really focuses on. And I think these are like a major bullets for his for myself as well. And also I love his greater vision to kind of like giving the world like a new, new vision where we want to go. Absolutely. Yeah. That's fantastic. Where did you meet him? In Berlin? Oh, no, yeah, we, we saw him in Berlin in the Tesla store. <laughs> fantastic. Fantastic. Hey, look, uh, Hannes, um, employee engagement is, is critical to an organization. I talk about this a lot, obviously, when we talk to other people. What do you, what do, you, what do, you do from the top or what will you, will, will you be doing from the top as you grow the organization? But I think one of the major things that like I also got through my experience working in other companies is that we try to lead with goals. Like we try not to give orders to our employees or do like micromanagement. It's more like we we try to enlighten them with like the broader goal and give them our vision. And then we, uh, it, it's more like of a, like a communication. It's, it's not really like, yeah, you have to do this. It, it's more like, yeah, we, we talk about it and then we develop a solution together. And if you do that, the people, since they are included in the decision process, they're like much more committed to do it and they understand why they have to do it. And I, I think through that, you get like a way better motivation from the people and also a way better understanding. And the results are also better because they understand why they are doing what they do. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I couldn't agree with that more. And what do you think, what do you think is the you know, challenge that's facing leaders in organizations today that, that you see in your opinion? But I think like this, like the transformation from leading with orders and by micromanagement to to leading with visions and targets. I I think that's like the 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 biggest yeah how, that's like the biggest challenge because it's like in you you have to start from like controlling your employees to trusting them. And if your organization is not used to trusting their employees, that's like a really big challenge because it, it also needs a challenge in the employee to, to, um, to, to take over this responsibility. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And what, what would you see and what would you see is the, you know, perhaps the best piece of business advice you've ever received? Maybe you got some from Elon Musk. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, it's uh, Elon Musk is also saying that, but but I think like the most important thing, at least for us, is like to try to go to the market as quick as possible. Like you you can pr you you can read this like everywhere. Everybody's saying it, and uh, it, it it took us still like we started in October and uh, we went to market like four or five months later. And still, like when we did it, we were thinking, okay, we have the best product ever. This was like so great. Good that we designed it all. And then we got into touch with like the real customers and the customer feedback helped us so much. And the product that we have now is so different from the one that we had like a couple of months ago. So right now with like th this uh, knowledge, I would start much, much earlier to go out with like a really crappy product and then ask the people what should be better, but also still have your own vision, what, sh what should be done. But I think this is like go to market as quick as possible was probably the best advice. Hey, that, that's great advice. And just, just do it and just get on with it. Um, what, what do you think is, um, or what do you do to help a new employee into your company understand the culture? But usually, uh, b before we even board somebody on, we tell them our story. We tell them where we come from. Uh, we compare like our goals, the goals with the company, with the goals of the person and uh, t try to to uh, look for people that already are kind of like in line with the culture. like. We, we wouldn't even like, we don't want to teach you our culture. It's more like in the stage that we are right now, we need you to already have kind of like the same culture as we, ha as we have, because like, we don't have the time and the budget to teach someone something that she doesn't really know. So uh, w what we are seeking for is like, for example, for developers, we, we need people that are like 
on hands that understand the subject that already have developed uh, like a kind of like other marketplaces and stuff and that's the, the people we are seeking for and also like <clears throat> I, I mean you hear this all the time in the startup world I think but people who want to improve the world and make it like a little bit better. What what is one mistake that you witness leaders making more frequently than others? I, I think expecting the employees to have the same vision and understanding for the company or product. Because um, if you're the, the founder or the leader, you have like a way better understanding usually than the other people because like you are in every department involved. So you have all, you have kind of most of the knowledge. And I think this is like a, a, a a major mistake because you have to bring people on your page all the time and share this information because otherwise they won't be in line with the with the goals you have and then you have like misinformation which can lead to mismotivation yeah i think that's a really good point and i think that's very can be very challenging to keep people abreast of everything that's going on that's that's a constant challenge i'm sure isn't it yeah, that's of course. And like also in this startup world, it's like constantly changing. But I also think it's like in, in every industry, like things are changing all the time. So it's like an, it, to have like a good information system in place, even when your team is growing, is like, I think also like a key to success. Absolutely. And what's, Hannes, what's the one behavior perhaps or trait that you have seen derail more leaders' careers? And it might be people that you know in the outside of the industry or, or someone that you've, you know, you, you know within your network in Germany? But I think one of the major things is like if you're not focusing on your product and if you're not loving your product. I think that's like the, the major thing that derails you. And if you're mainly focusing on like getting VC money and like y your product, just like you leave your product behind and it's like not as developed as it should be in order to even get VC money. So I think like the, the first thing that you should do is focus on your, on your product and then also love your product because if you don't love it, you can't sell it to anyone. And what do you think, you know, within, particularly for what's to do and the the community marketplace how do you see your industry evolving and changing in the future and and just as importantly how will this uh, impact your ability to attract and hire the best talent okay so i think like uh, like more broadly blockchain will definitely transform also our industry and also the way like uh, the finance world is working and through that also like VCs will become much less important. And ICOs will enable startups to scale much quicker. Uh, and uh, through that best, as a, in my opinion, the best talent will go to the best employer. And so the, the, the goal that you have to achieve is like, you have to develop an, a workplace or workspace where you yourself would love to work. And attracting and hire best talent, I think it won't be such a big challenge for us because what we are already doing right now is like we are using our platform to hire people for tasks that we need done and what's to do. And we have like really, really tremendously good effects through that. Like we hired already four to five people for different tasks and we uh, all, all got them through what's to do through our network and they did really good jobs. That's, that's amazing. And look, I'm, I'm gonna ask this last question in a slightly different way because you're still very early on in your journey as a company. But if you, perhaps if you started the company again yeah. and um, you gave yourself advice on what you would do different, what, what advice would you give yourself? But my first advice would be to learn programming by, on my own. And don't hesitate or regret that I didn't do it earlier. Just like start doing it r right from the start, even though I, I wouldn't program the, the platform on my own, but just for getting like a better understanding. And I would also tell myself uh, to get our product out earlier and not to focus on getting our first sale, but to focus on getting first active users. Because this was also like uh, in the beginning a mistake we made we were starting to, uh, to try to close the platform so we wouldn't lose any sale, which turned out to be kind of uh, stupid in the end because the sale is not as important as active users that actually 
have a benefit from your product. Absolutely. Hey, look, and thank you for being so open and honest with that feedback. And uh, I'm sure you're learning all the time. Hannes, how can, uh, if anyone's listening to this, and thanks so much for sharing such an insight into your, your business and your thinking, how can people connect, uh, connect with you? Well, they can connect to me through email, which would be uh, hannes at what's to do dot com or just like through LinkedIn and uh, there I'm Hannes Roswell R-O-T-H-W-E-L-L and yeah I'm happy to to share my knowledge and I'm also happy that uh, it was possible that we could do this together thank you very much Hannes thank you so much for joining us on the show we love Berlin so we'll have to come and visit you the next time we're in town and uh, look forward to hearing about your business success in the future Okay, thank you. You're more than welcome to come and visit us.